Support School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. All right, I'm Lindsay Smith with realagriculture.com. I'm joined today by John Gavlosky, entomologist with Manitoba Agriculture Food and Rural Development. Uh, we're standing in a beautiful cornfield, uh, late July. We're looking for corn borer. Is it really a risk? Where should we be looking? When do we reach economic threshold? Uh, corn borer can be a risk, but uh, like a lot of insects, the populations go up and you get uh, peaks and then other years the populations are on the downward side of their cycle and uh, the risk is lower. Um, as a general rule though, uh, corn growers should be looking for corn borer. Uh, even if you are growing one of the BT varieties, it's still good to be looking. Uh, just on the odd chance that you do get into a problem where there's some resistance. If you're not growing BT corn, then you really should be looking. And really what you need to be doing is this time of year, once we get into mid to late July, You'd be looking on the underside of the corn leaves, turning over the corn leaves, and looking next to the midrib underneath the leaves. Uh, what the corn borer does, they, they will emerge as adult moths, usually about mid-July. They like to kind of hang out during the day in the, the dense vegetation around a cornfield. At night, the females are going to come in, and again, they're going to be laying their eggs. They usually go underneath the leaf and lay their eggs right next to the midrib. So that's what you're going to be looking. Now what you're looking for are, um, essentially they look like uh, a group of f fish scales. They, the eggs themselves, they're, they're somewhat flat, and the way the corn borer female lays the eggs, one will be laid kind of over, overlapping the other, and there will be a cluster of between 10 to 40 eggs uh, in a group, and it almost looks like fish scales on the other side of these, small fish scales that is. So they're small clusters. All right, and so now they're going to emerge and start feeding. How many instars does the corn borer go through? And which instar um, are we sort of worried about? What happens kind of partway through that development cycle? Okay, so when the eggs hatch, you're gonna have very tiny uh, larvae. They're about two millimeters long when they hatch out, so really small. Uh, they look very pale with a black head. And you would again see uh, larvae, when the eggs hatch underneath, they will start dispersing and you'll start to get what look like little shot holes in the leaves. So that's stage one. Then they'll pretty much double their size, become about four to five millimeters. And again, still be doing shot holding, making holes in the leaves. Once they double their size again and become about 10 millimeters, they're into their third larval stage, their third instar. They go through five larval stages. Stage three is when they start going into the stems. So stage three, they're not going to stay on the leaf anymore. They're going to start moving to the stem and they're going to burrow right into the stem. Stage three, four, and five are in the stem. So for a grower, uh, you need to be scouting again, starting while well, we're already getting into late July. Now's the time to be scouting. There would be potentially egg masses in the field if corn borer is in the area. So be counting the egg masses, be counting larvae. And if you do have to control them, you need to get that done before they get to that third instar. Right, because once they're into the stem, we don't really have options for control. There is no option to control them once they're in the stem. Now you also mentioned, uh, we're here at a field day, and you mentioned sort of a discussion on if you had broken stalks last fall, not to assume it's corn borer. No, and I've run across this before where people just make the assumption, broken stalks, mean corn borer, and that's not the case. There's also uh, a couple different types of plant pathogens that will be right in the stem. If you split open the stems in October, late in the season, you will see uh, sometimes there's disease in there, and that can cause stems to break as well. And sometimes there's varietal effects too, where just because of the way the variety grows and gets heavy, uh, the stems will be toppling over. So don't make the assumption that because you had a lot of broken stalks, you had a corn borer problem. Maybe, maybe not. If you want to check it out, one thing you can do to assess corn borer, uh, they overwinter as a fully grown larva inside the stems. So after you've done your, your harvest, if you think you may have had corn borer, you can just take a very sharp knife and start splitting the stems and you would find the overwintering larva in there. Uh, if you had a problem, those broken stems, you should be able to easily find the larva. If you're having trouble finding them, it possibly wasn't corn borer. All right, thank you so much, John. You're welcome.